Aloha, this is Ben Hoff um, doing his final music presentation for uh, Music 102. Um, and today we're going to be focusing on Charles Ives. The reason for Charles Ives is he is, as the subtitle says, an American original. Um, he is one of the great composers of America. Um, he is given uh, what a lot of critics say, America, it's sound. Um, and uh, and he does this in by mixing traditional European forms with these new techniques, new ideas that to him and to me embodies this American dream or this American ideal. Just a quick overview: He lived in October from October twentieth to eighteen seventy four um, to May nineteenth of uh, nineteen fifty four. Um, so that's uh, just eighty years. Uh, he was born in Danbury, Connecticut. He was the son of uh, George Ives, a, a famous band director. Uh, he was a talented athlete, as successful as an insurance salesman, wrote over 150 songs, composed four symphonies, and a large amount of other works, including uh, quite a bit of chamber music. This is his father, George Ives, which played a, a significant role in uh, Charles Ives' life. He was the youngest bandmaster in the uh, Civil War, he was a cornet player, a band director, a theater and orchestra leader, a choir director, and a teacher. George Ives became the most influential musician in the entire region of that, uh, that uh, northern eastern United States. Danbury prided itself in the 1880s in being called the most musical town in Connecticut. Um, and that was in large part due to, due to George Ives' labors. Um, people still viewed at that time that profession with little understanding or respect, not seeing necessarily the, the need for culture, um, especially, you know, this is time of a war, um, and, and a lot of efforts are going to be going towards that effort, uh, towards that war. Um, like father, like son, um, this uh, uh, title comes from this story. Um, uh, George Ives comes home um, one day, and uh, little Charlie Ives is sitting at piano. He's about five years old, and uh, he start he's banging out a drumming rhythm that uh, his father had used in one of his uh, one of his compositions, um, or one of his arrangements. Um, and he's banging on with his fists on the piano, and it's just you know making these clusters. And uh, his father, unlike a lot of you know our, our parents, and telling us just to, to knock it off or to respect the instrument, um, his father actually says, um, sits down next to him and says, "Son, it's okay." Um, and you can keep doing that as long as you know what you're doing. And so then he sent him down the street to, to take drum lessons, which he did for a little while. Um, and then his uh, father put him in piano lessons. Um, he really wanted him to become a, a concert pianist, but he actually uh, turned to organ music pretty soon after that. Um, he spent large amounts of his childhood practicing. Uh, there's a story uh, that, that Charles Ives tells later in his life that talked about when he would be in practicing and he'd He'd look outside and see his friends pushing grocery carts or doing chores or playing ball. It just didn't feel right to practice, as, as you know his phrase. He loved sports. Um, you know, he when he had the opportunity, he just threw himself into sports, and he was a talented athlete. Um, I like this story. At the age of fifteen, how he played outfield for his baseball uh, baseball team in the afternoon, and then he played a full organ recital that same night. Um, I think a lot of musicians can relate to that. Um, so he was an organ player, played the organ in his church from ages 13 to 28. Um, this is an interesting story about the stonemason song. Um, George and Charles are out uh, one evening, and uh, they hear this stonemason singing. Um, and Charles remarks to his father about something about maybe his tonality or, or a lack of pitch sense. Um, and his father says this quote here, Look into his face and hear the music of the ages. Don't pay much attention to the sound, for if you do, you may miss the music. You won't get a wild, heroic ride to heaven on pretty little sounds. I love that, that idea of getting a wild, heroic ride to heaven and not doing that on just nice little nice little notes. Um, life as a student, as a music student, he started writing music at the age of 13, studied music at Yale under Horatio Parker, um, which was a very conservative training. In fact, he brought in uh, one of his more famous compositions. I believe it's called A Few Gun Four Notes, or symphony on four notes. Anyway, uh, something on four notes, and or in four keys. Excuse me. And uh, it's a concerto in four keys, and uh, all these four keys start simultaneously. So you've got a, a you know violin playing in one key and a piano playing the other key. Um, and his teacher says you won't be doing that anymore. Um, and so for the next years, it's it's very conservative. 
while he's at Yale, a very significant event happens. His father passes away, uh, which is really tough for him, and he composes his first symphony as a class project. After college, though, he decides to pursue a career in business, which we'll talk a little bit more about. Um, why did he chose business and, and specifically life insurance? I've said this. If a composer has a nice wife and some children, how can he let them starve on his dissonances? Which is a cool quote saying that how can he let um, you know his, his wife and his kids um, lack for anything, him not be able to provide just because he wants to do new and different kind of music or even a career in music at all. Um, but he still wrote a considerable, quite a, a large amount of work. Um, and uh, a source in which I was researching said this, it allowed him to room to create as he wanted without the impediment of relentlessly conservative musical establishment. Um, he could do whatever he wants because he's not writing for anyone. These are some quotes from Charles Ives. We'll just read a couple of these. Um, and if you'd like to, you may feel free to pause and then read some of these quotes. I like these. These are all from Charles Ives. Um, my business experience revealed me, uh, life to me in many aspects that I might have otherwise missed. Um, and then I like this one here, the, the, the second, the, the last one. My work in music um, helped my business and my uh, work in business helped my music. He composed a, a, at a frantic pace, uh, just so much music in between 1908 and 1927, and he suffered from several heart attacks as kind of over, as a result of overextending himself. But it was during this uh, this almost 20 year period that he wrote, wrote all of his music. Um, but one day towards the end in uh, 1927, he came downstairs just in tears, told his wife, "I can't, can't seem to compose anymore. I just try and try, and nothing comes out right." Um, and then just later, um, after that, he uh, resigned from an insurance agency and turned uh, directly just to his composition work. Um, but he just wasn't really able to write much anymore. And so he kind of saw the other side of uh, composing. Um, but this whole time, he stayed optimistic, funny. Um, someone described him as gloriously eccentric. Uh, and uh, he worked, uh, like I said, on that practical side of being a composer, writing letters to those who were interested in his work, editing pieces for publication, overseeing editings of his pieces, copying pieces. Um, and he earned quite a bit of business by going out and doing this. Um, and not only did he take this money to work, put it back into his own work, but he did quite a bit of musical philanthropy, uh, which means he, he did a lot of charity work. He, he donated a lot of money to musical causes all over the U.S. Um, his reception was slow, um, but uh, toward, towards the end of his life, he was very well respected. Um, and then he died in, in 1954. I'm just going over these last ones quickly so we can get to some of the music. Um, I love this this phrase. This was from a, a biography of him from a website I found. It says, Ives remains, perhaps always will, the great mavericks of one Western composers. It's a position he surely would approve of, yet for all the neglect that lasted to the end of his life, he felt confident that his work would reach the hearts and minds of its listeners. After he met Ives in the 1940s, the poet Louis uh, Untenmeyer recalled, His presence impressed me. There are few people who have uh, presence per se, a kind of self-assurance. He knew what he had done. He knew what he was. That's pretty cool. So we're going to talk about one of his pieces here called General Booth Enters Into Heaven. Um, this is one of my absolute favorite pieces, uh, a piece that I studied quite a bit for uh, my music theory class. Um, this is one of his best known, and it depicts uh, General Booth, who uh, William Booth is the founder of the Salvation Army, and it depicts them kind of going into heaven clumsily. It's not at this grand entrance. There's a lot of dissonance. There's a lot of really interesting th things in it. So we're going to watch just a little bit of the, this clip here. Um, Had 
Okay, we're going to stop it there, um, which is a shame because it has a beautiful ending for this piece. Um, I absolutely love it. Um, General Booth enters into heaven. This, it's, it's a, it's, the music isn't supposed to be pretty. It's supposed to really give you a vision of what this is doing. This, uh, this army lurching towards heaven, uh, the lepers and the people who are not physically uh, attractive. Um, but are qualifying for the Savior's healing. Um, and the, the music just does a beautiful, beautiful job of, of depicting that. This is a picture of, of General Booth here. Um, and I did this, this project, uh, the, the, uh, this music aspect of it for another class. I learned quite a bit about this music, and it's a shame we don't have enough time to talk about it. Um, but it was great to learn more about Charles Ives as a composer. I really like the description. He's a maverick. Um, uh, there's just not enough time to go in to talk about the whole tone scale um, or the kind of the history of it. Um, I had also planned on talking about the unanswered question, but we're running out of time. Um, so we're going to go back to the beginning here so I can kind of tie it up. Um, so once again, Charles Ives, one of the American originals, one of the great composers of America that really gave America its new sound um, and uh, one of the most influential composers in the 20th century. Um, and uh, just an incredible man. I highly recommend listening to The Unanswered Question, um, The Circus Band, uh, just many of these other pieces from this incredible composer. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you uh, do check him out. <laughs>